Man, I wish you could taste this. You're about to learn how you do it right, North Carolina style. We're gonna cook a bundrick stew on an open fire in a Dutch oven. We'll have some stew going here in a little bit while we baby girl. So while the fire is getting ready to cook down the coals, we're back in the kitchen doing a little bit of the prep work. And you can see that exactly 20 ingredients that are gonna go in today's North Carolina Brunswick stew. We got fresh chicken, pulled pork, we got a top sirloin steak and something very special here that most people will probably never get a chance to, to enjoy. This is moose meat, straight from Alaska. And the typical ingredients that you have in a Brunswick stew, but I like to add one extra in mine, which is black eyed peas. You don't have to put black eyed peas in yours. Just know that yours won't be as good as mine. Now we're going to go ahead and make our seasonings. You can do this the hard way and shake it over the fire, or you can go ahead and prep it up, and this will be a sh show you also how you can make a good dry rub for any of the things you want to do, uh, like a Boston butt or maybe even uh, wings. So we're going to do about a handful or maybe a teaspoon because that's about the same. We've got some garlic powder. We've got some smoked paprika cumin got to have some cumin and you can see there's not much left in this so we're just going to go ahead and put it all in there very important to get your chili powder i like to put some basil leaves and some good quality salt you can use sea salt and then i am a huge lover of black pepper you cannot have too much a handful and this is how, folks, how you save a lot of money and how you make your own dry rub. Got the fire good and ready and the coals are looking great. And we've moved all our ingredients outside. We're gonna be opening up all our vegetables here. One quick update to what you saw earlier on in the kitchen. There's a couple ingredients that we're missing. We've got to make sure you add plenty of good corn and limas. Absolutely a must for Brunswick stew. This delicacy right here, this is some stew meat from a, a moose. So shout out to our friends and family in Alaska, Roger and Mona, thank you very much. If you ever find yourself in Anchorage, make sure you go by the Ulu store, pick yourself up one of these. Great for chopping. Whether you wanna, we're gonna chop up some onion here, you can do nuts with it, and obviously you can fillet an entire moose with this thing. It's very important in the order that we're gonna do things. We watched a lot of YouTube videos of people who just say, you know what, we're gonna dump it all in a pot and see what happens. I'm very peculiar about this piece. We're going to get a really good hot sear on both this steak and our moose. Now, if you don't have moose, of course, you can use any kind of beef that you would like. Really want to make sure we get a good crisp char on some of that meat that's really going to bring out the flavor. You can see a good ulu will make short work of anything. This is what the, the native Alaskans actually use. This is what you get if you send two sons and a wife through ECU. You get this $100,000 beer huggy. Moose meat our sirloin steak and our onions on the trusty ulu and all of that is going straight in and with that good sizzle we talked about put in some of our seasoning we talked about earlier this stir stick has stirred many a catfish stew brunswick stew and we're going to carry on the tradition today but I can tell you that it is the first time that it has ever stirred moose. All right, as you can tell, we are ready because the onions are transloose and the moose is on the loose. We're gonna first throw in some nice potatoes. We like to use the water from that because it's gonna give it some good flavor. Butter beans, also wanna use the juices from all of these cans, but each one of them is going to impart some wonderful flavor. Then we go with our first tomato sauce. There's another tomato sauce, very important. I have at least two of those. Now we're going to put in our black eyed peas. That's my secret sauce there. A lot of people that you'll see on YouTube. Like I said earlier, you don't have to put black eyed peas in yours. It just won't be as good as mine. 
put in our limes. They're frozen, but they won't be frozen long. Back of corn. Very important to stay, save your chicken stock. You can see right there in this pot right here, all that golden goodness on top. Every one of those beautiful little bubbles is chicken fat. And that is extremely important to your flavor profile. And we're gonna add in this beautiful chicken stock. If you ever get a chance and you're in the store, it's much easier to buy these type of cans that open right here, especially if you're going to do them fireside. You don't have to manually can crank them. But this today, this is the only can that we got lucky enough to have a pull top. A little bit more seasoning we're going to put in here. We'll save some to add later to taste. Well, I'll give that a good stir. Put the lid on and we'll come back and check it in about 15 20 minutes. All right, one last thing we're going to do here is we're going to chop up some of this wonderful pulled pork. We cooked a 135 pound whole hog and fed probably 60 75 people that night. Now we're going to Add in all of this pulled pork, this pulled chicken, and this kielbasa that I pulled. And she goes. Stirring's half the fun. Hanging out by the fire pit with your friends and family, or your neighbors, I promise you, if you invite them over, or offer some of this stew, they'll, be, they'll come running. Friend or foe, they'll eat this. That's a reminder. Just everybody needs to get along. Love thy neighbor. That's what you're supposed to be doing. You make this big old pot, you got to share it with some people. Maybe somebody you don't even see eye to eye with, but this will bring you together. And if you break bread together, you're usually a lot more friendly to one another and willing to consider the other person's point of view. We were going to add a little barbecue sauce. That's about that much. I would say is a quarter of a cup. And about the same on some ketchup. That's, I bet you can smell it right through the camera, can't you? I know you wish you were here. If I was you, I would want to be me too. So like I said, the cook gets the best pieces. We put a little bit of this prime Alaskan moose meat on a spit and put it over our coals here. And let her saute. Man, I wish you could taste this. But all you're gonna get to do is look at it. The chicken and the pork are all really stringy. It's breaking down just like you want it. You still got some nice chunks, so when you bite into it, it's not just all minced up. I've had several Brunswick stews from different parts of the country. Georgia and Virginia, of course, like to argue and fight over who invented it. That's up to them to figure out. But uh, I've watched some folks who run all this basically through a grinder. It basically turns it into a baby food consistency. So I'd rather have mine with some nice chunks in it. See. She's standing up on her own, folks. She's ready to go. You can serve this with cornbread, corn dodgers, hush puppies, any kind of bread you want. But it, I promise you, it doesn't need a thing. We're going to take this over to the picnic table where I have picked my wife a fresh bouquet of dogwood flowers, just like the song says. Since we're going to have us a sunset picnic right over there. All right, folks, it is the moment we've been waiting for. Time for the taste test. Here we go, we're going in. We got a fresh cup of wine for the spousal unit and a fresh cup of ice cold water with our Ure Colorado cup. I can't wait to get back there. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. Mighty fine.